Hello, my name is Justyna Olko. I work at the Faculty of Artes Liberales of the University of Warsaw. I direct its Center for Research and Practice in Cultural Continuity. I work with speakers of indigenous and minority languages, and I'm engaged in projects of linguistic revitalization. At that time, I was in my hometown, Kraków, in Poland, uh, with my family, celebrating the historical moment for the history of our country, that is, the passage from the communist regime to the democratic system. Just two months before the Berlin Wall fell, I was in Berlin, and at that time, the first democratic government of Tadeusz Mazowiecki was formed in Poland. When I was 11 years old, I decided I want to work with indigenous cultures of America, the Mayas, the Aztecs. And in my previous life, I became an archaeologist and I work in the Guatemalan jungle. But then I realized I want to work with people who are still alive. Multilingual and multicultural words are a fact of our past, our present and hopefully our future. We need to better understand and manage this diversity. What are the challenges? Every three months, one language disappears from the face of the earth. We need to look for solutions. The solution I've been fostering was to break walls between the academy and local communities, communities speaking endangered languages. Another wall that needs to fall is the gap between academic research and academic disciplines and local systems of knowledge and local indigenous epistemologies. In my research and different kinds of activities, I've become aware that it is crucial to stimulate grassroots projects, community-driven research and self-empowerment of speakers of endangered languages. The team research I've coordinated and directed has shown that the use of local heritage languages contributes to the well-being of speakers and it also protects from negative psychological consequences of historical trauma. Our another important finding concerns the speakers of the Kashubian language in Poland. We've been able to show that despite different forms of discrimination, the speakers of Kashubian became emotionally attached to their language and speak it more often. We repeatedly hear about acts of discrimination against minorities, and this also concerns the speakers of minority languages. Especially in recent time during the pandemic, we've become aware that COVID-19 has been devastating for minority groups not just for their health, but also for the languages they speak. Many forms of discrimination and stigmatization have long-term negative effects for this group, but they also affect our society and our economies. We can harness a number of psychological, health-related, social and economic benefits, not only for the speakers of endangered languages, but also for a broader society. I want to understand much better what made multilingualism stable in the past and what can make it stable today. We need to find better ways to deal with our multicultural and multilinguistic heritage. I would like to convince politicians, educators, parents of minority children and a broader society that linguistic diversity is not a threat, but a source of agency, self-empowerment greater social cohesion and mutual enrichment. Our research and engaged activities can contribute to this. I would like to live in a world which is rightly proud of its diversity. My daughter says that my work helps members of local communities not to be ashamed to speak their languages. She also says that this is the best work for me because I'm really happy doing this work.